to do. And Noah Harvey's ready. I mean, he is. He's been prepping for exactly this opportunity, and I expect him to step up and, and perform big time. I mean, you're the one in, in the room with the linebackers every week. Do you sense that there's still confidence there? I mean, it has to have been shaken a little bit. Yeah, you know, the leaders gone. I think that uh, our defense as a whole played really well in the, the second. They feel they played really well in the second half of the Penn State game. I feel that way as well. And I think that confidence right now is, is high. And regardless of the circumstances, um, they're feeling good right now. And uh, we're going to go into this game playing fast and all, all the other outside situations, we're just using them as motivation. When you look at Illinois, three game win streak obviously, and they gave Michigan a run too. What, yeah. what on film has their offense clicking right now? You know, they understand what they're doing. They're, they run the ball very, very well. It's inside zone, it's outside zone, and it's counter. And they do them in multiple formations at a very, very fast tempo. Um, offensive line does a great job. They run, they cut more than most people you see, which creates holes, and they have a couple good backs. What's uh, What's been your message this week to your guys? I mean, obviously, you know, you take a hit with Joe and, and you know, take some other hits, but what, what's been the message, I guess, in, in the room? You know, the message has mostly been about uh, looking at the last time we played ball, and specifically the the second half of that Penn State game where we played fast. I think I think we triggered a lot more, believed in ourselves a lot more in, in our most recent game of football than we had the couple weeks before that. So I think that's the overriding theme right now. And uh, again, losing, losing players, we need to use that as motivation and we need to perform for them. I'm sure you already hit Preston specifically, but with Joe, how do you replace a guy like that? Well, it's hard. I mean, Love Joe like a son, and he's a great football player, and he was a leader. But that's the way we train our Mike backers. I mean, we said that about Riley Bulla. We said that about Max Bulla. We said that about Greg Jones. So um, now it has to be Noah Harvey. He understands what's expected of him in that position in our defense. He's been training for it, and uh, guys believe in him. So next man up, let's go. What do you, what do you see in Noah that makes him that, you know, that guy to, to you know take over for Joe? Well, he can he can run, first of all. Um, he understands our defense and, and what he's being asked to do. Um, he, he's, he's powerful. He can deliver a blow. I mean, much like Joe, when he engages in contact, he can knock you backwards. Um, but the bottom line is he understands it. He believes in himself, and the guys believe in him. This was a storyline that we were kind of asking about in spring and, and you know, heading into fall camp about finding that next Mike. Right. Not that you want to lose Joe, but is this kind of – I guess the decision to use him or maybe instead of Tyreek because he could play there, is that kind of geared towards looking at the future of the position since you got four games? Yeah, a combination. It's also geared towards not shaking up too much, you know, because now you move Tyreek in, Tyreek's in a new position. You move maybe Chase Klein in or Noah Harvey over, and you're, you're shaking up multiple people. So you try to shake up as little as possible if you have a guy that you think can perform in that situation. Now, um, Tyreek's ready to do it if, if need be. Um, I know he's fully capable of doing it, but we're trying to keep it as status quo as possible. Do you expect Noah to have that kind of workload that Joe has? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. And uh, regardless of who we were inserting at that Mike linebacker spot, those are the expectations, and, and those are the expe expectations he, he wants. But it is a hard position to rotate guys. It is. You, he's your quarterback. It's like going every other series at quarterback. So, um, yeah, the workload's going to be there. Mark said there's a little bit of a battle going on at cornerback between Josh and Shakur. What have mm -hmm. you seen from that competition there? Well, you know what? Competition is a beautiful thing. I mean, it makes both guys step up their game. And, and I think, uh, I think honestly, it hurt Josh and Josiah a little bit that there wasn't a third corner really pushing. And, uh, you know, they both probably upped their – pick quota this week, which is which is good to see, but I think it comes down to competition, which adds a little bit of focus in the classroom, a little bit of focus in walkthroughs in every single rep, so it's, it's good for the team. Where is this team's mind at with the whole loss of Joe and everything? I think they're motivated to play the best ball we ever have in a combination of for Joe, but also coming off what we think was a pretty good half of football last time we were on the football field. So it's a motivating factor. I think the energy has been fantastic. I think they're doing it... Uh, you know, for Joe and, and for themselves. 
you look at the 2016 class, I mean, is, is there any lessons that you guys can learn from that experience? And, you know, or is it just a situation where, you know, <laughs> things just didn't work out? No, you learn lessons from every experience you have. That's sort of the yeah. composite of who you are. Mm -hmm. So um, we look back at every successful uh, player that's been through the program and everybody that's been through their struggles. and. We try to learn our lessons from them. So, yeah, we, we're growing every day. Is that impact um, more, most felt now, I guess, because, I mean, they have uh, I guess gotten to this advanced stage in their, you know, college careers, I mean, the, the group that was signed, you know, back then? You know what? I'm having a hard time with this question because yeah. I'd have to look at a 2016 yeah. recruiting class for me to, for yeah. me to answer that <coughs> question. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, mm -hmm. as coaches, as players, we have to learn from our experiences, good and bad, and we have to get stronger. Over the past years, the, the defense has been this team's strength. I mean, there's been a lot of strengths, but that's been, you know, the main thing. And have you noticed, or after watching film um, the past three games, what what do you think the or pinpoint the main thing has been the cause of, of why the struggles have been there? Yeah. Like, I guess I've said this a couple of times, but I think our guys feel confident right now based on our last time on the football field. I think they feel that they are triggering, they are believing in what they're seeing, they are trusting that the other guy's going to be there and they don't need to make every play. And if I were to point to something, I would be uh, guys trying to do too much and not being willing to just trigger 100% to their job because they want to make too many plays. Thank you, sir. Absolutely.